Hi, welcome to lesson 10. By the end of this video, you will have completed the war card game project. All that's left to do is to count score and update the labels. In order to do that though, we need to write Swift code that can compare two numbers and then execute a different branch of code depending on the outcome. In other words, you're going to be writing Swift code that can make its own decisions. That's step one if you want to build a Terminator. All right, let's get this show on the road. So here I've got a playground and the only thing I have right now is a constant called x and I've set it to equal to 10. And now I'm going to show you how to write what's called an if statement. And this if statement lets us test conditions and if the condition that we're testing is true, then we can choose to run some code. And this is how we are going to actually compare the two numbers in our war card game project when we randomize those two numbers. So let me show you how to write this if statement. We start off with the keyword if and then we do space and then we write our uh, condition or expression here. And in this case, I'm going to test this condition is x greater than 14. And if that is true, then I want to run the following code. We open up a code block with a pair of curly brackets and then inside here, let's just print hello. So I'm just going to put a comment here. Um, this code will run if x is greater than 14. Since x is actually 10 and this is not true, it's not going to run this statement here. It's not going to run any of the code in here. I can put lots of code statements in here if I wanted to. Now let's change x to 15. In this case, this becomes true and then it's going to run the code inside the if statement and therefore we see this hello statement down here. Now the cool thing is that I can actually expand my if statement into multiple branches. I can test many things if I wanted to. And the way we do that is this first test we use if. The second test we use else space if and then I can test another condition. I can say is x less than 10, right? If that's the case then let's print, uh, I don't know, let's just print a and then I can go on and I can test something else is x. Uh, let's do equal to and open up another code block if that is true. Now here's the interesting thing I want to show you. If x is equal to 12, I don't use the single equal sign. I use a double equal sign and this is to test equality. Why is this the case? Well, because the single equal sign is used for assignment. You learned this back in the first Swift lesson where we talked about variables and constants. This equal sign is to use to assign this data on the right hand side to the variable or to the constant. So if I use the single equal sign here, Xcode will actually think we are assigning this to that when we actually want to compare. So you use the double equal sign to test for equality. All right, so in this case, I'm going to just print B. So far, we've said that you can test a single condition and then you can test other conditions after that. And there is actually a last part to the if statement, which is the else keyword. And there is no if in this case. This is kind of like the last resort. If none of these conditions up here are true, then it's, this is kind of like your catch all. Let's open up a code block and let's just print C in here. So this entire thing is your if statement. Let's talk about how this code is going to be run. So when it comes here, it's going to test this statement is x greater than 14. And if it is, it's going to come into this. This is called a branch of the if statement. And it's going to execute this line and it's going to skip everything else because in the entire if statement, it's only going to choose one branch to go into. So in here, this is true. So it comes into this branch and it's going to skip the rest. How about if we change x to 9? Now A is printed. So what's happening here? Well, it's going to test this condition first and that's false. So then it's going to test the next one. And in this case, it's true. So then it's going to come into here and it's going to skip the rest. Now let's change X to 12 and you kind of get the idea, right? It tests this one, false. It'll test the next one. That's false. Then it'll test the next one. And this is true. So it's going to come in here and it's going to skip this guy. Now, if I just made uh, let's see, 13 would be, I guess, the sweet spot here. And we get C because it's going to test these conditions, all of them evaluate to false. And then it's going to come down here 
And this is kind of the last resort where if none of this is true, then it's going to come into this branch of code. I want to point out that you can actually just omit the else if you wanted to. And if you did that, nothing would happen because it would check all of these conditions. All of them are false, so it's not going to do any of it. And furthermore, you can have more else if branches if you want, or you could just have one, or you can simply have none. And just a simple single branch if statement. Let me just hit undo here. I want to point out something else here. And that is that this whole thing is a single if statement. I know I've said this before, but I want to tell you what the implications of that are. It means that only a single branch of this if statement is going to be executed, right? It's going to go into the first one that is true. Or since we have an else clause, it's going to come into this last branch. This is different than if I had done something like this. If I had done something like this, these are separate if statements. This is a single if statement. This is another if statement. And lastly, this is the third if statement. So that means in this case, I could have multiple things printed. So let me change uh, this to that. And if I had this as, let's say, 15, right, you can see hello is printed, you can see A is printed, and you can see that C is also printed, right? And the reason for this is because this is a single if statement. It's going to test this. If it's true, then it's going to print this. Now onto the second if statement. This is true, so it's going to print this. Third if statement, it's going to test this. That's false. Then it's going to come into the else branch. Right, this is very different than if I had made these branches of my first if statement. Now, this is a single if statement. It's only going to choose one branch to go into. It's going to test each of these conditions and go into the first one that is true, in this case, this one, and it's going to skip the rest. So I just want to make that distinction to you. And the last thing I just want to say about if statements before we move on is that testing these conditions can actually get pretty complex because there are things called Boolean operators where you can chain multiple conditions together. So I'm just going to do a very quick example. This isn't something that we're going to need for our war card game project, but, um, you know, good to know this stuff. So for example, I can test if X is greater than 14 and Y is equal to 10. I use a double ampersand symbol like that space and then I can test that. So this is going to do two tests and they both have to be true in order for it to come into this branch because it's an end. Okay, and you can actually chain a whole bunch of these together. Now I want to show you or and that is these two double pipes. On my keyboard, I have to hold down shift and hit the backslash key in order to get these symbols here. This is the or operator. That means that if this is true or this is true, then it will come into here. Only one of these two conditions needs to be true. You know, one can be false. For example, uh, let's say I change X to 10, right? This is false. However, this is true. And since it's an or, it will still come into here and print hello. However, if this is an end clause, then they both have to be true. You can see down here, it actually comes down to print C down here. Okay, so that's the and and or, and you can chain multiple uh, statements together. And actually, let me show you one more thing. So this is equality if y is equal to 10. Right. If you want to test inequality, you use that exclamation mark equals, and that is going to say if y is not equal to 10. And just to whet your appetite a little bit and show you some more things that you can do with if statements, you can even include these brackets. So you can say something like if this and this are true, or you know x plus y is greater than 29 or something like that. So in this or statement, either this is true or Either this is true, and that's what those uh, brackets allow you to do, kind of like group things together. Or if we had another thing that's like a string like that, you can do tests like if z is equal to test, then we could print hello. 
or you know you can do not equal to test and you can actually even do greater than um, but in this case it's kind of weird to say if it's greater than or less than a but essentially it doesn't care about the string length so even though test is four characters and this is only one character it basically tests character by character if this is greater than a then it's going to be considered true you know and if we had um, two letters like that it would also it would basically test this letter against this letter and then e is considered greater than a right so this would be true and it come down here but i don't usually see this happening a lot using <laughs> equality symbols using greater than or less than with strings but just wanted to show you that that was possible all right so now we're going to go back into our war card game project and use if statements to compare the scores so we're going to first go into the view controller swift and when deal tapped in here um, we are randomizing two numbers right the left random number and the right random number and then we are setting the images in fact we should probably write some comments so i think we can get rid of this print statement here let's get rid of these print statements and down here i'm going to write um, randomize two numbers change the image views and down here we are going to compare the numbers All right so i can say if the left random number is greater than the right random number and then we open up a pair of curly brackets right in this case the left side has one because it's got the bigger number and i'm gonna do here else if right random number is greater than the left random number then do this and then for the last clause there's only one more possibility right and that is if they are equal so i can either you know just use an else statement like that or you can just do you know if left random number is equal to right random number if you want to be a little clear you can do that as well so there are three different cases so in order to keep a score we actually need a counter of some sort so we're going to go all the way up here and we are going to write uh, two properties to keep track of the scores so let us write a left score we're going to just set that to zero and we are also going to do a right score also equal to zero and let's scroll all the way back down here so if the left random number is greater than the right random number then we're going to increase this uh, the left score so you can either do left score equals left score plus one or you can actually do a shorthand way and that is to use the symbol plus equals and that just means to increment so we're going to increment whatever left score is by one all right we're going to do the same thing here if the right random number is greater than the left number then we are going to do the right score plus equal one and if you want to decrement you can actually do minus equal just a quick note all right so here update the score now update the label to reflect that new score and we have an ib outlet property for that left score label right we s connected it before so we can do left score label and the label has actually got a text property and you've said it before let's go to the storyboard let me click this label you can see here in the inspector panel there is this text property right here all right so we can use dot notation start typing text and it expects a string all right so we can try to assign it this left score, which is an integer, and you can see what happens, right? And Xcode is gonna complain, cannot assign value of int to a type of string. So we need to somehow convert this int data to a string data, right? We need to represent that number in the form of a string. So you can actually create a new string object and pass in an integer to create a string version of that integer and you do it like this 
Okay, so we're going to do the same thing here. Update the score. Update the label and make sure you are incrementing the correct score. Right here we are incrementing the left score and updating the left score label. Here we're going to update the right score and update the right score label. Dot text equals a new string and in this string object we are going to initialize it with the right score. And let us run our project and see how that looks. For a tie, I'm not sure what we want to do there, so I'm just going to actually leave that empty. So 10 is greater than 6, so we have this updated. This is greater than 5, so we have this is 2 now. It looks like the player is winning all the time. And there we go. CPU gets one on the scoreboard. 10 is greater than 5. All right, pretty cool, right? Now the last part is how do we get this app onto our device? So what you're going to do is you're actually going to plug your device into your computer. And then if you go back to Xcode here and you pull down this where you select the simulator and you go all the way up here, you're going to see this menu. No, well, mine says no devices connected to my Mac because I don't actually have a phone there. But if you have connected your phone or your iPad here, uh, you're going to see that device appear here and then you just want to select it. Um, so this is what I get because I don't have a device. But when you select it, um, it should have your device selected. And then all you need to do is hit the run button and you're going to run that app on your device. And even after you disconnect your device, you'll still have that app on your phone. And you also might get a prompt if it's the first time you're using your device with Xcode, you might get um, a little pop-up asking if you want to use this device for development, then you just say yes, and off you go. Not bad, right? Look at how far you've come. Seriously, give yourself a pat on the back. If you finish this project, I want you to go to the lesson page, scroll down, and click on that tweet button to let me know. I love hearing from people who have completed this project, and I'll also put your name on the wall of fame that is exclusively for people who have finished this project. And if you haven't gotten this project to work yet, Remember, you can always download my Xcode project and compare it against your own. Also, don't be afraid to ask for help. Just leave a comment below. In the next lesson, I'll show you where to go from here and what to learn next. All right, see you there.